Um, hello. Uh, how's everyone doing today or tonight? Whenever you get a chance to re watch this video, um, uh, grace and peace be multiplied to you uh, in the love of the Lord Jesus Christ. Um, reign inside of your hearts and be with you all. Uh, um, basically, this video is just going to be about being human. Uh, and the overall overall premise of um. Uh, the teachings of Christ, uh, the differences between individuals who are in the church and individuals who are secular, uh, and um, when they actually practice these biblical um, principles, and obviously uh, the moral laws of <clears throat> the scriptures and just obviously good things. Uh, why they obviously benefit a lot more from them and um and why Christians don't obviously benefit as much as they should. Uh and uh that's essentially it. Uh so um I'm just gonna start off with obviously the the bad. Um and just something to obviously notice whenever you are and just questions to ask yourselves when you actually are in these congregations, if you decide to still go to church even after hearing my um uh my videos and uh or even just to go to church and just to actually see see what um <clears throat> uh just questions to ask yourself to see if you should actually stay in your church or uh what these issues may be or you know they could be obeying 95 percent of the guidelines that christ himself had given to us for his church or you could just say forget it i'm just going to stick to 100 percent uh and just obviously keep it in a, on a more human level and keep it on a more on the more human side of things that uh they need to be preaching spiritual warfare for the children to be protecting the children uh and obviously that should be the overall uh, enough foundation, but obviously not letting individuals remain ignorant of the evils that the devil is obviously uh, advancing and obviously wants under the guise and the premise that obviously he's uh, testing you, uh, as well as what he actually is. Uh, so, uh, okay, um, I have a lot to actually say about that. I don't know why I haven't put that in a video, but... Um, uh, Basically, the first thing that I have to say, I have to make two points right now, uh, really fast. The first thing is, where is your pastor obviously taking you? Uh, because whatever his judgment is going to be, obviously, is going to be this, the same judgment for everyone in his congregation, unless you decide to go above and beyond what your pastor says. Uh, and the second thing, obviously, that the devil himself is just a sword, We're testing and refining to see who are God's children. Uh, and who aren't God's children. So that's essentially why he comes inside of your life. It is on you and your responsibility. Obviously, nobody's going to hold you accountable. For, you're not going to be held accountable for somebody else's actions. Uh, and that's just obviously facts. Uh, but it is on you and your own efforts uh, to actually be... Um, uh, obviously, not succumbing to the temptations that the devil obviously throws at you as that seems to be some of the things that individuals are even heavily ignorant on that while they're continuing on this path with God and continuing on this on this uh walk with Christ uh they forget that they're going to be tested to see if they really are a part of the remnant to see if they actually uh are going to hold strong on the faith and that they need to be prepared for these tests and to ensure that they don't obviously waver <laughs> And they don't decide to actually leave Christ at any time whatsoever, uh, which is essentially the reason why there's an apostasy and obviously the reasons why these tests come inside of your life. So uh, I don't know how many individuals had they known this information before they actually ended up falling back uh, and um, and leaving the faith and departing the faith. Uh if they would actually have still remained or what would have been the issue uh, with them as more often than not, more often than not, these individuals are just naturally rebellious, uh, and um, obviously they don't like to admit these types of things because they hold on to this like integrity or this 
uh, image that supposedly because they're Christian that they wouldn't be rebellious. That's something that they left a long time ago, or maybe something that they never actually uh, stepped their feet in to actually test the waters. And so um, this is something that becomes really difficult to get an individual to admit and to be able to see and recognize that they themselves are probably rebellious more than likely 100 percent obviously these individuals are rebellious in some way shape or form there's always something that individuals want to hold on to uh and always something that individuals are not ready or willing to let go uh when in reality uh these things the way that God himself sees these things, he obviously wants these individuals to just uh, let these things go for him because he obviously has something 10 times better than whatever these individuals are holding on to. Uh, but because their knowledge is so small of the things that they actually have and they're holding on to, uh, they don't realistically put two and two together that greater is actually going to come in the future and because of that um they hold on to these things for dear life thinking and forgetting that greater is going to come and so this seems to be the main issue with many women with makeup with beauty uh with fashion and, and just obviously these things that themselves that they um uh it's just spirits whatever these individuals is have when it comes to makeup uh the the color red or whatever color it is there's spirits that are actually behind these things themselves or whenever you put on a certain color like baby blue or powder blue or whatever or you put on khaki and these are spirits that are actually behind these uh things themselves that catches your eyes and you're just like oh wow that looks so good i need to try that out and so obviously these things are just everything is all spiritual that's something that you need to understand uh so uh when you get attracted by something that looks good something that's beautiful something that alerts to the flesh i guess and other things uh that captivates your eyes um these things have spirits behind them uh haircuts i guess uh, why individuals want a certain kind of haircut or a certain kind of look uh, there is spirits behind them a certain kind of demeanor or a certain kind of spirit uh, seriousness to an individual there are spirits behind these types of principles themselves uh, with shoes individuals get covetous or maybe they see um, they see an outfit right and it doesn't really look good on them or, or things like that. There's there's spirits behind these things themselves. Uh, and they're trying to figure out why it doesn't look good on them. But on the other individual, it looks really good on. And uh, his humbleness, obviously, that's one of the main things. They don't really have open doors or closed doors. So I just wanted to get that little thing out of the way. That way individuals could just uh, really recognize and see what they're what is actually catching their attention? What is actually catching uh, catching their um, their eyes? Uh, that is making them obviously gravitate to uh, covetousness. Obviously, these individuals want these types of things. Some individuals get envious towards these uh, spirits themselves, and obviously, just general um, preferences that individuals just have when they actually um, go out and do these types of things so that's out of the way um and so essentially that's why you actually like some of the things that you like you like the spirits that are attributed to them and the spirits that are behind these things um you could apply it in the same principle as well you could just lose those types of spirits inside of your vessel and inside of your mind heart soul will and your emotions but obviously this isn't what this is about whatsoever this is about a uh, genuine uh, character development and you actually uh, advancing getting refined having a change of heart and actually being the type of individual that um you're growing and you're maturing in christ uh you're not really holding on to the same um childish way of coping with things uh when situations come inside of your life you don't really look at these things and decide to throw a temper tantrum in the middle of the store and have everybody look at you like wow look at this 35 year old uh fussing and and screaming and throwing himself on the floor kicking the floor and just having the a little temper tantrum obviously these are just things that are generally you know Round the blind people are just going to be like, yeah, well, I'm not going to act like that. You already have decided to label these individuals as Karens and Kevins. 
Uh, so please be mindful and please be respectful uh, of individuals' feelings. Some of these individuals are having a bad day and then you just treat these individuals like garbage for uh, their one mistake as well. And you continue to label them and to hold these people to this image of um, that they're just so messed up and they're so sick in the head. Uh, failing to recognize that you actually are placing some curses inside of their lives. Not everybody thinks like you. Uh, and because of that... You label this individual as a Karen, uh, and a demon gets stuck and attributed to this person. And this demon in itself obviously gets stuck to the person's mind. Uh, and uh, and obviously you have already cursed this person inadvertently. You obviously didn't try to curse this person, but uh, the person is obviously, well, not the person, the demon itself is attracted to this spirit or this mentality or this um this negativity that you're placing on this person. And so this person are completely unaware of what is actually happening in the spiritual in itself. Uh, they tend to overthink their actions. That's the telltale sign for them to be able to tell, uh, for anyone to be able to tell when they actually are under this, and they're beginning this demonic oppression, when they begin overthinking about something because the devil in itself that is uh, attempting, they're hearing these thoughts at this point, they're hearing these things and they're just like, and and so they beat themselves up about it and the devil is beating themselves up about it just so the devil can remain and stay uh, inside of their life. So uh, in short, don't do that. Don't call these individuals Karens and Kevins. Don't make derogatory terms about somebody else. Don't call them stupid. Don't call yourself stupid. Uh, just because of the spiritual side of things that when you actually begin doing these things, uh, an individual could be weak-minded and automatically they begin to um, to uh, beat themselves up about it, right? And they're just like, oh, well, I guess I'm just like that. And so they let the door wide open for this demon to come inside of their life, to remain and stay inside of this, this life. And so this person could be more weak-minded than you think, and this person just spirals in, in this way. Uh, world in this realm of depression and they're just like oh man i can't believe it i can't believe that this is my life i'm just this horrible person or not maybe not like that not as obvious as that it's like nobody's ever going to accept me everybody's always going to call me a karen so uh, obviously you kind of murdered this individual because uh you destroy their image completely and guy's not really able to use this person any longer uh because or he can because uh you everybody just looks at this person like they're a laughing stock they're an outcast uh and they don't really fit in with the world anymore because uh of the reputation that they now have developed uh because of one bad day because they had one bad day and so they yelled at this person and then here you are just calling this person so this is obviously a lot more serious and you need to take a lot more responsibility for your words uh and take action uh, to change and to stop uh, these types of things themselves. If you see another individual automatically pulling out their cell phone, trying to get this on the internet and try to do this and try to do that, obviously tell them to have respect for another person's privacy. Uh, don't post it on social media. You already know how people are. Uh, keep it out if you want to. Just I know individuals are going to say, what if this person lashes out and just hits this person? The police need evidence for it. But more often than not, these people are not going to do that whatsoever. They're obviously going to post it on the internet for everybody to see. And so these are just things to reflect on. I don't know how many people have decided to want to kill themselves over these little types of things like that. I've heard stories of it. So so yeah, this is a lot more serious than, uh, than you think. Uh, and, uh, and so um, this is just to put that in perspective. Uh, that way you're not going out. That way you're not actually going out. And you're just saying whatever you want to say. Uh, obviously forgetting that the demons are always listening. They're watching. They're trying to tempt you uh, the entire time to make you fall. And to make you fall into sin. So, um, 
This is just something to meditate on, to pray to Christ about, to reveal these things to you. That way you actually are able to uh, really lay this to heart. Because I know you hear these messages, but until you actually gain firsthand experience uh, to be able to see that what I'm actually saying is true, you're probably never going to learn in all honesty. And so this is why it's important for you to uh, be 100% uh, diligent and in seeking Christ for these types of answers to see if these things are true and not really just accepting whatever uh, and accepting whatever your pastor says blindly, but really uh, taking an active role. As I always say, I always mention that in my videos, that this is what Christ wants. He doesn't want you just um, worshiping, taking an active role in worship and then not really doing anything. Highlighting all these scriptures uh and then forgetting about the scriptures that you highlighted i don't know how many times that's happened to me where i would even make posts or i make pictures or whatever and then i would completely i never look at these things again uh and so the main way for me to actually be able to remember the things that i say and to even some of these things are just like yeah i know i've accepted that a long time ago but now i actually have the words to put it uh in um but some of these things, obviously, I don't look back towards again. So I make these videos and I play these videos back. That's not the case with every single post that I make. So um, if I make this mistake, if this happens to me, obviously, this is going to happen to you. Definitely. I don't even know if you pray it for an hour or two hours or three hours or what you even do with your life. If you watch television, if you're in the secular world or, or what it is that you do, if you're already living in that type of lifestyle, I could tell you 100% it's lukewarm. So if you really don't want to accept that, um, honestly, you're probably going to end up burning in the lake of fire. It's not even probably, it's, it's 100%. Well, Christ is demanding a lot from you. He's demanding a lot from me. So based off that standard alone, uh, the things that he actually is demanding from me, automatically he's going to demand these things for you. He's not a respecter of persons. Every individual was on the face of this earth. Obviously, he's not going to tell me to get on the podium and, or, and start talking about these things because that's not um, what I'm meant to do. I'm not supposed to go into a random church building and just say, hey, guys, and other things like that. But there's just a certain order that, that Christ himself and just certain, obviously, uh, foundations that individuals need to be doing. Everything that I meant that I do, that I've mentioned to do, spiritual warfare, uh, praying for three hours on end, all of these things themselves are just fundamental, fundamental things uh, that every Christian needs to do on top of the things that they already should be doing. Uh, so I know it seems like a lot, it seems like a burden, but realistically, if you're just watching TV for eight hours on end, three of those hours could have been spent on praying. Uh, or if you actually are working, you work for from this time to this time. Uh, I already have plenty of videos where I actually have talked about what I used to do in my life, where I used to work landscaping, coming home tired, feeling like my back is about to break. It feels like two heavy rocks grinding against each other and still making it home every single day uh, to pray for three hours on end. Obviously, I would fall asleep while I would pray uh, some of the times, but... Uh, these are just things that whatever you decide to make time for it, it and is really going to show where your heart is actually at so these things are, are just fundamental building blocks principles that are christians on top of the works that you actually need to be doing so uh if you notice that your pastor whatever your pastor is actually preparing you for uh or whatever your pastor is going to get the, whatever he gets uh, how do i word this the same judgment that your pastor gets is the same judgment you're going to get. If you end up going to the great white throne judgment and you notice that your pastor got thrown to the lake of fire, you're going to go to the lake of fire, unfortunately. So these are more than just, you know, kick my feet up. My pastor knows what he's doing. These are serious uh, intercessions uh, and intercedings for yourself to ensure that you actually, I mean, because realistically, he's not going to answer for you at that time. The only person that's going to answer for you uh, during that time itself is going to be you. So he, he's going to bring these messages up. He's going to say, why didn't you listen? Uh, even the comments on other individuals' his pages. I know plenty of people see my comments and they decide to either mock it uh, and just to be like, you don't have to do all that. You're radical. You're insane. You're crazy. Cut it out. Stop doing it. Uh, you're going to get judged for every single thing that you obviously say because of the things that I actually 
do and the things that I actually say. So obviously I do pray for three hours on end. I've read the whole scriptures themselves except for numbers. Uh, and I go back, back and forth. I go back to the same old things. I don't watch television. You know, obviously I live a life that is really centered around the gospel itself. It's like, yeah, I play video games, but whatever. Um, I obey the law of Moses. That's one of the easiest things to do just because I, most of the things that we already do uh, in itself, obviously these things are just pretty basic stuff. The only things that you realistically have to worry about or the things that you need to actually uh, not be so ignorant on is the dietary laws. Linen, you don't wear linen. Linen is more for, uh, this, or and wool in itself. There's not really much things that actually have linen. There's not really much things that have wool. So that is just pretty easy. Linen is more often than not going to be your bed sheets. Wool in itself, the same thing, or a wool sweater. But cotton, 50% cotton, obviously, he just said don't mix linen and don't mix wool uh, at the same time. So, uh, but more, uh, the things that you really need to, um, be cautious of and actually be practicing uh is the dietary laws and not mixing cheese with milk and not mixing cheese with meat uh and so no cheeseburgers no pizza with whatever it's all veg veggie stuff when it comes to cheese which realistically isn't a big deal it's just food uh if you really have an issue with these types of things uh then i'm sorry obviously you need to really grow out of that way of thinking where the food is realistically you're not willing to let these things go uh no matter if it's your soul on the line completely immature completely foolish to just let go completely foolish to not let go of pork of eating barbecue ribs these things in themselves are going to cause cancer and so um everything else in the law of moses just taking care of uh, the orphans the needy all these things are heart centered, uh, and these things are just focused on the heart in, in itself. So, um, Christ isn't going to get mad at you if you decide to obviously do something that is more humane instead of doing something that is inhumane. Like when it came to uh, the woman at the uh, caught in adultery, um, obviously, what was replaced with that is obviously doing something human, showing mercy to an individual who actually didn't deserve mercy because she actually broke. Uh, the law, even though she wasn't supposed to be stoned to death because the husband, the man wasn't there, uh, Christ forgave her 100%. He said, you haven't sinned? Oh, wait, no, all, I haven't sinned. Uh, and um, <laughs> the he who was without sin cast the first stone. And so uh, obviously these individuals dropped their stones right away. And, and that was the whole premise of why he actually said that all of you are are sinners all of you have sinned at some point and then for you to just judge this individual on that standard as if you guys are perfect uh is is not hypocrisy but obviously he wanted them to focus on the heart uh and to focus on what if this was you, you know, put yourself in her shoes and, and to really imagine uh what if this was you and so um that was the whole premise on Christ's teachings. Hating your enemies became loving your enemies. It became a heart transformation uh, thing. So obviously this is what I'm looping towards. Back to what I mentioned at the beginning of the video. Uh, how individuals who actually are, um, are secular, they automatically just do these things because they don't really answer to anybody. So uh, because they don't answer to anyone, it's on, to, it's on their judgment to decide if they want to do something nice to an individual, to a homeless person, uh, without actually reaping any of the benefits or any of the rewards. But when it comes to Christians, uh, when they decide to actually love their enemies, that's when they actually get mad. Uh, because they're like, they put this in a legalistic box because they're like, man, I have, I'm commanded to do these things. And I'm forced to do these things and I don't really want to do these things. And so they tend to actually gravitate toward the rebellion side of things. They get rebellious towards it because uh, they're commanded by God to actually uh, to do it. And so these individuals are not able to sustain or withstand the fires rather. And so they end up failing. They end up departing the faith from these basic principles uh, just because they put this in a legalistic box and, it, and they 
uh, and the overall attitude that they actually had. Although the individuals who are secular, they're, it's up to their judgment to obviously be nice to their enemies or to or to somebody who they had wronged them to buy them food uh, or, or whatever the case may be because they don't answer to anyone. They already hold on to this uh, heart integrity where they have uh, decided within themselves that they're not actually going to uh, be petty because they're not immature. And so they're not really uh, obeying anybody. They're just doing this out of their own treasures of their hearts. Uh, but when it comes to Christians, you tell them to love your enemies because you get rewarded in heaven. They obviously are centered around the rewards instead of the overall heart change that Christ himself wants from every individual that is in the body of Christ. Uh, and obviously wants for everyone on the face of this earth uh, to accept salvation and to be able to already uh, be practicing this integrity and this work. Uh, while they are actually obeying the commandments uh, that he himself had given to us and not really have a negative attitude about it or a poor outlook and just be like, oh, uh, well, I'm commanded to do it. Uh, Lord, uh, you got to you gotta restrain me from this. I, I, you can't, I, I don't want to. I don't want to be nice to this individual when in reality is just um, to be mature about these things, to just have a different uh, perspective on why you actually... Uh, are following Christ, where you actually are doing the things that Christ himself commanded uh, to do. Uh, and stop being so, uh, stop leaning towards the reward side of things and start leaning towards the more mature side of things of actually doing it for a heart transformation. And just because you need to mature and just because you need to grow up, uh, I'm not saying this in a, in a in a negative manner or in a bad tone. I'm just saying this is you need to seriously evaluate your outlook, your attitude, uh, and just your overall uh, thinking process uh, when you actually are, because um, that's the, one of the main issues as well, uh, how individuals just think ends up destroying them. They have a, just such a poor attitude towards um just basic principles like don't be don't be shady don't be grimy to another individual uh but everybody is different uh everybody was raised a lot different and uh and so uh, they hold on to this pride that or not even this pride but they hold on to this this um what they have just been accustomed to coping with these situations all their life uh really unwilling to let these things go and um, be actually ready to really grow out of that way of thinking and really grow out of these. Um, I mean, I, I'm sure you're noticing a theme, what the main issue is when it comes to a person, their general attitude towards these things and how they actually approach situations. Obviously, it comes, uh, the origins of these uh, sins themselves actually comes from the heart. This is all 100% a heart issue that these individuals have. Uh, they're, they're not really able to put two and two together. They can't equate it. Uh, and this is the main issue and the main deal. This is the iniquity uh, of the heart that they don't really view these things as sins. Their hearts are completely rotten uh, in that region of things. Uh, and, and they're just like, well, Christ is going to work through my flaws, when in reality, there's another person in, on the face of this earth who just doesn't think like you and just would n never do anything like that because of of whatever type of integrity, whatever type of coping mechanism or uh, however they cope with these things in a healthy manner. They were raised right. I mean, I'm sorry that you weren't raised right uh, in that side of things, but this is just... Uh, something that individuals really need to recognize and really need to see that uh, Christ is able to actually see how another individual thinks. He's able to uh, to just be able to tell you to just let it go. It's like this person has no issue letting it go. This person has absolutely no problem uh, being wronged. He just overlooks these things and then for the, something, for one of the smallest things and one of the, the tiniest um issues that come inside of your life you're over here throwing uh, a fit you're throwing a temper tantrum and you're saying that how could you let this happen to me uh when this individual has gone through uh whatever you know obviously you've been through it all and then you're over here with, for the smallest little thing you're just like and so uh obviously christ is able to see these things he's not going to tell you um uh, that you obviously messed up but uh, you, unfortunately, you're going to have to figure that out on your own. And I know many individuals don't want to 
see it like that. They don't want to believe that they're going to have to really pay the the consequences and suffer the consequences for that outlook and that attitude. But that's in this this essentially what always happens and then these tests and these trials actually come uh you get mad at god you're like why is god treating me like this i i've been good uh i've been good since i've been on on this walk with christ and and you finally decided to change but your past is obviously haunting you at that point and now you're actually paying and suffering for the consequences for your uh outlook uh and your life in the past uh and this is essentially revenge is served cold and you completely forgot about it uh but christ didn't forget and he essentially paid you back for these things when um you already had let go of that mentality not necessarily every situation is like that obviously keep it simple keep it rational christ is able to do whatever he wants whenever he wants Sometimes he'll just use you because he knows you're going to pass uh, the test that he's going to and pass the fires. That way, more individuals are actually able to uh, to benefit from your experience because if another person was in your shoes for the tests and the trials that are about to come inside of your life, they would end up dying. They would end up losing their soul. Uh, and, and so this is essentially why he obviously gives some of these individuals these tests, even though you've never been wronged or whatever. Uh how this individual copes with these uh, situations and these stresses and, and these problems and these, what would be the word, um, horrific and traumatizing situations that it's like, oh man, I wouldn't wish that on my enemy type of stuff. Uh, it, it's all for your benefit 100%. That way you actually are able to let go of these things. And that way if somebody actually does something petty to you, you actually are like, and you're like yeah at least it's not as big as what happened to that guy and so you're really able to overlook some of these things that would, typically you would just be like yeah uh i gotta i gotta pay this person back because he messed up my order uh type of stuff and so i mean hopefully you're actually able to see how christ works how everything works for the benefit of those who actually love christ who actually love god and so um and, but yet, still, it is on your own uh, attitude, your own outlook, and your own, um, it, it is just on your own responsibility. You're accountable for all of your actions. Uh, Christ is not going to hold another person accountable for your actions at any point. Your parents wouldn't do that ever. I don't understand why you think that you would even need to bring or somehow they would justify you by bringing another person into the actual equation when it's just between you and Christ itself. Uh, so uh, that's that side of things. Um, but yeah, I don't really have much else to say uh, about that. It, it was just uh, not something that I noticed about Christ himself that he actually does, but definitely something that uh, individuals overlook on a daily basis they're just like oh wow well they just go on about their lives just failing to recognize some of the things that are actually happening instead of your life are meant to benefit another person as well as some of the things that are happening inside of your life i mean unfortunately it could be used by god to ensure that that person never does or one of the people who are in the body of christ never makes the same mistakes that you make so obviously it could be protection at the same time uh you could actually reflect on your own life and your own uh, time-wasting habits and your own habits uh, in itself, as well as for you to actually fear the Lord. There's been many stories in, in there's been many stories in, in the scriptures themselves where God used another individual to be able to teach uh, His people to be able to fear Him, like Pharaoh uh, and, and the plagues, and uh, and obviously there's been other times where His people actually ended up. Uh, suffering the consequences for their, their rebellion and their sins uh, and their iniquities. So uh, with God, whatever, he knows what's best in the end. Uh, and you need to learn to offer what God wants. And so uh, and so these tests and these trials obviously come inside of your life with the intent and the purpose to actually be able to refine you and to be able to see if you actually are a child of God. Um 
there's many individuals on the face of this earth who don't even know that. There are people who are Christians who are in the body of Christ that they fail to actually see these tests for what it actually is and for what Christ is actually doing. And essentially, he's trying to test your faithfulness and he's trying to test to see if you actually are going to be loyal to him and if you actually going, are actually going to be faithful to him. So um, the devil comes inside of your life in many tempting manners to get you to leave Christ. It comes in the form of adultery. It comes in the form of sin, obviously. It comes in the form of uh, pleasures like smoking cigarettes or just something that would just deviate itself from the narrow path and from the... Uh, and into the broad path of destruction. So um, that would be the whole premise. I know some of it has to deal with overall emotional issues uh, primarily. Obviously, that's how the devil is able to get many Christians. He's able to affect their emotions by making them really uncomfortable and making them really uneasy. Uh, and because of that, obviously, these individuals are, are so accustomed to hearing that Christ is going to bless your finances, Christ is going to prosper you. Uh, and, and protect your finances and then these issues come where your finances weren't protected you weren't blessed like your pastor said which none of this was scriptural whatsoever um christ himself is going to send these fires in itself whenever these inconveniences obviously happen in a person's life the first person they automatically go to and they look towards is is god like you did this you knew this was going to happen how could you uh your god aren't you in control why did you let this happen and they automatically point the finger at god really failing to recognize uh to know that god actually knows what they were going to say and to and to actually recognize that they need to uh hold firm in the faith to be loyal to god uh and to really recognize and see who was actually in control Christ himself, 100%, he's the, the puppet master. He's the one who's puppeteering every single person on the face of this earth. And under this premise itself, every situation, every disturbance, every un uncomfortable situation that comes inside of your life, anything that is slightly uh, stressful or slightly, uh, obviously, shake, you're getting shaken, right? Uh Christ is puppeteering it all. Some of it are just um, punishments, and some of it is just obviously refinings. Uh, but it's still on your decision, honestly, in all, in all honesty, uh, to decide to to humble yourself down and actually be obedient to Christ or to just say, forget it. I'm just going to do whatever I want. I'm going to hold on to, to my own knowledge and I know what's right more than God knows what's right. Now, you don't confess this, but obviously this is what you would imply uh, when you get mad at God and when you actually charge God with a sin that supposedly is his fault. Uh, for uh, So obviously this is very big because you charge God with sin. Uh, and, and so... And so you're just like, oh, this is your fault. You did this to me. You, how could you do this to me? Don't you know this and uh, and all this other stuff? And so down the line, these tests get more and more severe. They get more and more um, hotter. These fires get definitely ten times hotter than what they were in the beginning. But um, Christ still expects you to actually uh, obey Him. And to be faithful and loyal to him because of all the times that he was loyal to you when you weren't loyal to him. Uh, so obviously he expects the same back. <laughs> but people don't see it like that. They're just like, oh, well, uh, this, he needs to understand. I'm forgetful. I'm this. I'm dumb. He needs to take it easy on me. He knows these things. And that's something that you need to know as well. So because he knows these things you really need to ask yourselves what is the purpose for these tests why is these tests coming inside of my life if christ knows these things and obviously he wants you to learn some sort of lesson he wants you to humble yourself down uh and more importantly he wants you to know that he's still on the throne and that he, he hasn't lost control whatsoever uh at, at any point so essentially this is the main uh point that i need you to really understand that christ himself is a puppet master all right the devil is a puppet the devil is not at all puppeting god at any point whatsoever he's not manipulating god's judgments he's not manipulating god's people 
because he knows that if they sin and they fall into sin, Christ at any point whatsoever, he could, he already knows it's going to make you stumble and make you fall, but he gives you graces uh, so you don't actually stumble and fall. And in turn, obviously, the devil fails because of it, uh, as well as sending angels ahead of time because he's able to listen to the thoughts of the devil at any point whatsoever. It's not really anything. He's all-knowing and all-powerful, So and he's everywhere at the same time. He already knows that he's operating in the under the premise of tests. He already knows that the devil is operating under that premise that he's going to test this person to beat you down further and further into uh, the wood. Uh, and obviously the devil is uh, the hammer at that point. Uh, and so he he's not really worried about anything. You're the only person that's going to be held accountable for all of your sins and all of your failures that you didn't make good use of your time and opportunities, that you should have been passing these tests, uh, or your pastor didn't even bother telling you these things, that these fires are going to come, and what the devil actually is, is a whole other story. So uh, you really need to focus on that, and you really need to see what's more important. Uh, God protecting your finances, are you preparing for the test uh, and the fires? Uh, there's a good uh, saying that I like, uh, it's, I'd rather be a gardener, or no, I'd rather be a warrior in a garden instead of a gardener in a war. Uh, and that's essentially the type of principle that you need to live by. Uh, it's better to know this information, to be prepared for the tests and the fires, uh, and they never come, than to have these tests and fires come inside of your life and you're not prepared whatsoever for them. As well as overall, the, the, the premise that individuals really need to focus on, that they actually need to be engaged uh, in war. It's better to be focused in spiritual warfare uh, 24-7, to be prepared for the wars when they actually come, uh, or the real battles when they actually come, than to not even ever bother engaged in sp engaging in spiritual warfare. And then when the wars actually do come, you end up failing and losing your soul, and you lose the battle in the biggest battles uh, that will ultimately cause you to lose your soul. The choice is up to you. Uh, I can't force you to obviously do anything. Uh, but if some of these things just make sense to you, or some of these things are just like, yeah, I mean, it's just generally wise and it's generally frowned upon to not actually be prepared and to not take the right measurements and precautions for the things that could or couldn't, couldn't happen. Uh, and more importantly, to not think that it can't happen to me. Uh and and just little little keep simple principles like that. They don't even bother teaching in the church uh, itself. They just focus their attention one hundred percent on worship, uh, and they don't really focus on actually preparing you for uh, these tests that are going to come. That's something that I need you to obviously understand as well that they are going to come. But they don't even bother preparing you for the things that are actually going to come when they're going to come. So, I mean, they could buy well, not even that, but. They're not even preparing you for anything whatsoever. They're just preparing you for for worshiping these demons away. And you know, what's going to happen when you need to fight these demons away? You don't even know how to fight. You don't know how to engage in spiritual warfare. Uh, God's hand finally gets removed because he's tired of you piggyback riding him and you're not actually doing a single thing and just having your feet up and kicking your feet up and you're just like, well, whatever. Christ's grace has been carrying me this whole time. And you think just by dumbing yourself down there, uh, this grace is still going to hold yourself, hold you down when in reality Christ already knows that you know he wants you to actually be a warrior in the garden uh, and not a gardener in a war. He wants you to actually be prepared just because obviously it's good. It's something that you need to recognize and see that just because it's good, Christ himself wants uh, this for you. This is not just a suggestion, but this is a command uh, as well, which is something that you need to really have ears to hear and to really be able to see that this is uh, 100 percent of command uh, that you need to actually hear uh, that Christ demands that from you. He demands you that you be prepared for every situation, whatever it may be. Uh, and how prepared you are is all entirely uh, on you, 100 percent. So if you feel like these things can't happen to you, I mean, unfortunately, you're just like the house that's, that's built on sand. When the storm is going to come, it's going to be um just destroyed so um or you could think ahead of time and just build your house on rock uh just like the parable says the choice is on you uh and unfortunately as as intelligent and as praiseworthy as this may sound many people are still never going to hearken to that i know you want to think that because you were going to hearken to it many people are going to hearken to it 
I learned that the hard way that just because it sounds good and it sounds praiseworthy and it is good, many individuals is just nod their head like, yeah, that sounds good, but they never put it to practice. Uh, they never make the right efforts and diligent efforts to ensure that it becomes a habit. Uh, and obviously they end up forgetting uh, these fires and these tests actually come and guess what happens? They end up failing miserably. They end up crying to God, uh, telling him, I hate you. How could you do this to me? And just leaving the, uh, and just leaving the, just leaving the faith 100 percent even though i've been warning warning them repeatedly uh, over and over and the, these individuals were just like no i don't want to see it like that uh and, and that's all entirely on them so um obviously this is a priority for you you need to be a warrior in the garden and not a gardener in a war and i'm just repeating that one more time just so you really understand and you really uh, are thinking about it and because this already has happened to many individuals who who's obviously used to be christians but not anymore um so make the right decisions don't make mistakes that you could easily avoid um that's a command in itself all these things are heavily dependent on you I have to take my own advice as well. I'm not stupid in that aspect where I just tell you to do this, do that, but I don't take my own advice. Um, that's one of the main things that every, every individual obviously says and every individual is quick to point the finger to and quick to bring up. Like, are you even taking your own advice type of stuff? And it's just like, and people are just looking for any bit of leverage just so you could back off and just so you could obviously um not they don't feel convicted for this and and they don't feel uh, like they're wrong or they have a feel if they feel a need to change or they need to change or anything uh like that so um again the choice is all yours 100 percent, and i really can't make you do anything um I can't even make you be a smart individual or to actually be wanting that type of virtue inside of your life to actually be sharp, to be um, sensibly sharp, spiritually sharp. To catch these little things inside of um, inside of the Gospels and commandments of Christ uh, and, and to just obviously be um, uh, a, a smart person, an intelligent person, uh, a prudent person, a wise individual, uh, and just overall general things of individuals. Just, I mean, these these are just things that your parents even, you know, raise you with, but uh, they don't really apply it to what they need to apply it to. Instead, they just focus on legalisms, uh, and just like how I mentioned earlier, that because Christ commanded me, that's they're missing the point of the gospel. The whole gospel, the point of the gospel itself is obviously to be uh, reconciled to the image that we originally fell from, uh, which was sin. So you're looking at these things from a carnal perspective. I mean, yes, God commands you to do it, but obviously the whole issue in itself is the heart issue. You really need to get that sin out of your life, and you really need to get a heart change and, and, and a mature outlook on actual life to ensure that you actually are obeying God because you genuinely care about this person, and you genuinely want to actually love your enemies and or, or whatever it is that you actually are wishing the best for somebody who absolutely wants to murder you and destroy you. Uh and whatever else the case may be with this person, you don't know what this person has been through for them to actually look at you with such hatred. Uh, but all you can do is obviously really grow up and really mature from that way of thinking where um, where you just wish the best for a person, right? But still many individuals are just so centered on the the commandments uh the, the commands right but not really on the the heart transformation and, and the the transformative uh side of you actually obeying the commandments of christ and what god himself actually commanded us to do so uh obviously i already understood that the devil is going to come inside of your life to put this attitude inside of your life to be like oh they're just commands why do i have to do this man i know i'm commanded to do this but realistically you need to look past that uh and you really need to just well like mature be mature about it and just be like this like forget that 
uh, I, I really need to to change it. Not really, I really need to change, but I really need to actually um, uh, to help this person out. I really wish this person the best, regardless of if God commanded me or not, which is the whole point of the gospel itself. Oh, excuse me. Uh, so, uh, so yeah, um, but the main, uh, point that I need you to actually really focus on that is really going to help you, um, pass these tests that actually come inside of your life, uh, is to really understand that Christ himself is the puppet master. He's the one sending all of these tests inside of your life. I could put the, I mean, the easiest example that I could obviously use, uh, to help you out is just imagining yourself actually uh, being the puppet master of your own life. You sending these tests and these trials, these tribulations to your own life for your own benefit. And that's the whole purpose why every single thing comes inside of your life. Every single person, every single reaction, every single thing that you love, every single every single thing that you hate. Um, that's the whole reason why. Uh, these things even come inside of your life because you're puppeteering everything and everyone on the face of this earth for your benefit 100%. I mean, that makes these things 10 times easier for you to understand what I actually am trying to say. But now you need to focus this type of attitude and, and this type of knowledge and understanding to Christ himself being the puppet master uh, and puppeteering every single thing that actually comes inside of your life for your benefit 100% in the same manner as if it was you doing it. So... Um, obviously some of these tests and these trials and stressful situations that come inside of your life are just meaningless. They're so fickle. They're so, uh, frivolous. They're so petty. Uh, and they're so nothing. They're absolutely nothing. It really, uh, belittles the situations and, and these types of trials and these tribulations that come inside of your life. Uh, when you're the one sending these trials inside of your life, because you know yourself better than anyone else. Uh, and you know the reasons why these trials would come inside of your life, why you would even send these trials to come inside of your life. And so, um, obviously this takes maturity and even more maturity to be able to accept that Christ is the one sending it and that because Christ is the one sending these things inside of your life, he knows what's best. Uh, I've already been putting this to practice, uh, and um, but I keep forgetting, so... Uh, if I keep forgetting these things, you're going to end up forgetting it uh, as well. As well as Christ himself can make you forgetful and make you forget it. That way you actually end up reaping some more rewards. I mean, he's obviously able to test you with hotter fires. Uh, if you don't think that these tests are 
or whatever puppeteered by you or whoever you may think is doing it. Uh, but, um, but yeah, that's the main point that I need individuals to really be focused on and really be centered in, as well as just applying it to your pastors as well, especially if they don't actually talk about the things that I actually have been talking about in this video. Uh, it's really asked the question, like, what am I actually doing inside of this congregation? Uh, this individual, if this person uh, it really cares about Christ's heart and really cares about whatever and cares about this and biblical foundations and biblical truths, uh, what is more important to focus on, to focus on really preparing the, well, preparing the, um, uh, the congregation for war against the devil for the actual children or worshiping Christ. I mean, these things are just at face value. You're actually able to see uh, what's more important. Uh, is it, is um, worship really as important as um, spiritual warfare against the devil to protect these kids? Or is whatever this individual has to say that Christ wants to protect you and Christ is, is and, and just obviously things like that. But um, I mean, the choice is yours. Uh, I know individuals still will never hearken to this message and they will never want to accept this as truth because they're so mad at God. And uh, obviously, some of these individuals are really pressed for time, they don't really have as much time as they think. Uh, they don't really uh, don't have the experience to be able to um, or the knowledge to be able to understand what I actually am saying. I know me, myself, I've heard countless testimonies and then I went back to these testimonies after years and I gained some knowledge and I was actually able to understand where this person was at, what this person was actually was saying. And so um, you really don't have as much time as you think. Um um, but it's better late than never, right? You might as well start now uh, and, and really apply yourselves as well as really focusing and putting that type of attention uh, on what is lukewarm, what crisis has been demanding from me. Obviously, he's going to demand it from you uh, and not really just justifying your own actions and justifying your own walk with Christ, but really buckling down and really uh, admitting the fact that obviously Christ is going to require the same uh, from you as he's requiring requiring from me a top of the works that you actually are meant to to do and the the works that you obviously are are created for so uh these are just biblical foundations not biblical fundamental foundations rather and then whatever christ himself wants you to do it, it's just what you actually are required to do so you may be overwhelmed or you may be getting overwhelmed by everything that you actually have to do, but that that only shows you what you actually have been doing with your time. I've already been putting these things to practice myself, and it's so simple and it's so easy. Uh, it's just second nature to me, praying every day for three hours. Uh, I mean, sometimes, whatever, right? Uh, but I, I don't feel right sometimes actually praying, and I feel ten times better praying and uh is is addicting after you already have been doing it for such a long time i've been doing this since like 2018 uh it was like 30 minutes and then i went to an hour and then i went to two hours and obviously when christ was requiring requiring me to pray for like three hours obviously i understood that it was a commandment and he didn't want me ever praying for an hour an hour two hours but um but yeah um And even now, it is still uh, increasing. Now he wants me to pray for more. I've been praying for more for four hours now, and honestly, that's a lot uh, of time to just be speaking in tongues, to be praying in tongues, us uh, to be praying in an unknown tongue, which is just easy. You just need to tap into the power to be able to. Or tap into the ability rather to be able to speak in tongues and like that but it's off it's, it's all faith based you need to believe it if you don't believe that you can you never will uh but automatically you'll actually be able to tell that it actually is real when you uh actually start speaking in tongues uh and this uh it, it just feels like 
I mean, the easy examples that I could, the easiest example that I actually I could actually give to you is um is a dam. So you see all that water that's behind the dam. When you actually, that's essentially what you actually have been holding back. You've been holding the spirit back, uh, and so when you actually begin to speak in tongues, it's like the dam automatically just breaks into a million pieces and all the water just be that's essentially what it feels like when you first begin uh when it's your first time ever uh, speaking in tongues so yeah that's how you definitely know that it's real and that's how it happened with me uh and obviously i understood as well that i was quenching the spirit for not actually speaking in tongues and i was quenching my spirit uh side of things for not actually speaking in tongues because that's what Christ actually demands uh, from everyone, from you, uh, that everyone actually prays in tongues. But because individuals are unbelieving, they don't actually think that they're capable of speaking in tongues or maybe the gifts aren't for everyone or they can't control their tongues or they can't do this or they can't do that, um, they stop themselves short. So... And they stopped the spirit short 100%. And because of that, they never bother uh, releasing the floodgates and really, and just destroying that dam, that stopping that spirit from actually um, leading their life. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, so... Um, so yeah, I mean, if it helps you, if you need more faith, just ask for Christ to give you this, the uh, the gift of tongues. And then because you actually asked, and just tap into the ability to be able to speak in tongues. Uh, that's a little mind hack uh, for you. Uh, unfortunately, this is how individuals think who are in the body of Christ. They have to ask first for them to actually believe that they're going to get it. And then they actually put these things to practice, and then they actually get it. Um, all of it is just faith builders, 100%. Uh, and, yeah, so. Um, I'm going to ask the Holy Spirit what else he wants to say. Uh, spiritual warfare. That's essentially what Christ himself wants me to also explain to you uh, because uh, you realistically don't have the discernment to be able to discern. Uh, these things are 100%. They're final. Uh, and whatever the Holy Spirit says is whatever ends up going. So um, he wants everyone to focus on spiritual warfare. If your pastor is not focused on spiritual warfare, he's not being led by the Holy Spirit at all. Um, whoever whoever preaches the gospel isn't led by the Holy Spirit they just uh, preach about this and this and this but then they forget about spiritual warfare uh, they're not being led by uh, the Holy Spirit uh, at that time anymore at that point anymore whatsoever as well as me obviously telling you that they're not being led 100% because I took my spirit away from them that's already done and over with, but that's the easiest way for you to be able to tell that this individual isn't filled with the Holy Ghost anymore. Um, he wants everyone to be engaged in spiritual warfare, not just me, not just you. Uh, everyone. So he wants you to tell, obviously, more people to be engaged in spiritual warfare because that's what he demands. And obviously, it's for the children, as well as you benefit in itself because you're actually able to deliver yourselves because that's essentially what spiritual warfare is, and that's what deliverance is. They're one and the same. They're interchangeable. Uh, you can't deliver yourselves without spiritual warfare. You can't engage in spiritual warfare without deliverance. Uh, so... You can't do one without the other, in all honesty. Don't be afraid of the devil. I know he comes out of your life to intimidate you, but that's 100% just a test him from God himself. You need to be firm in the faith of who God actually is. And that's it. It's as simple as that. 
And that, because God would definitely rebuke you for capitalizing his name. And God is definitely going to rebuke you for being afraid of the devil instead of being afraid of him. For being more afraid of the devil instead of being more afraid of him. You're a follower of the devil at that point, And you become a slave to sin and to that specific sin uh, from that point on. So obviously these things are a lot more serious than you, than you initially thought. You thought that, you know, obviously I'm scared for my safety because I know the devil is going to come after my life. But realistically, you really need to have this faith. Uh, in God himself. So that's the sin that you obviously had committed. You doubted God. And because you doubted God and his abilities and his capabilities, um, you were afraid of the devil. So, uh, I mean, I'm sorry. Repent. And stop capitalizing his name. You don't have to be afraid of him. Uh, if you're afraid of, of the devil at any point, you're doubting God 100%. So be afraid of God. Don't doubt God. That's blasphemy. Uh, excuse me. Man, what else did I have to say? I mean, I had a lot to say. Well, not really a lot, but I kind of felt like a lot. Um... Mm. The man is Jesus. What else? You will definitely be rebuked if you're afraid of the devil at any point. So this should be more than motivating for you to take on the biggest battles and the and the bigger battles like David against Goliath. Uh because your life is going to get worse and it's not even going to be the devil's fault. It's going to be God's fault. He's going to curse you. I know you read plenty of stories in the scriptures where God cursed individuals and these individuals never got better or they ended up dying. So uh, definitely be afraid of God and don't be afraid of the devil whatsoever. Unless you want to be afraid of him, that's up to you. I don't know why. God is 100% 10 times smarter than a million times, infinitely times smarter than the devil. And then for you to just limit God to what the scriptures are and that's it. Uh, to who God actually is is just obviously foolish. And then you don't even have half as much knowledge about the devil in the scriptures. Considering all the things that you know about God, and yet you're afraid of the devil, even though he learned everything from God himself. Everything that he does, everything that he is, is two plus two equals four to God. What's two plus two, guys? It's four. Simple, right? That's the devil to God. That's the devil to you. Be confident. Don't be afraid. And, um, yeah, pray that the grace of the Lord is out of your vessel. I really understand that everything, every blessing, every ability and capability, every ability to memorize the scripture in a verse, is a grace, um, especially at the right circumstances at the time. The angels are coming to you. There's an angel that whispers this verse to you. That's essentially what is actually happening when you actually remember a verse. Uh, it's an angel actually whispering it and telling you it because they're all workers of God, because God is a great king. Do you think it's God himself or the Holy Spirit himself actually telling you these things? But... Uh, this, obviously, you're actually able to talk to the Holy Spirit person to person. Uh, but he is a great king. The Holy Spirit is on his throne. So obviously, he does send um, servants to do his will and to actually serve him. Um, but all of that in itself is a 100% of grace. You're not going to be able to be this confident and this bold against the devil without any type of, any form of grace whatsoever. And that's deliverance. That's what deliverance is, in case you didn't know. Deliverance is removing the, the bondage and placing in the grace. So you were a bondage to that sin, but now you're a bondage, uh, to, to grace.
you're in bonds to grace at that point. You're serving grace. You're, you're a servant of God because you're fearing God instead of fearing the devil. Don't be intimidated. Don't be afraid of anything that the devil has to say or do or whatever the case may be. More often than not, some of these things are just whatever. And they weren't really anything, but because you were feeling overwhelmed or it was the first time that it actually started happening, um, you really didn't know how to cope with it. So so I pray that the grace, more graces are loose inside of your vessel. I mean, unfortunately, it really is all nothing but grace. I know this world likes to say that, oh, I did it by my own talent or I'm very talented, I'm very gifted. All these gifts are just graces. All these talents are just graces. Nobody can do it without God whatsoever. And he gifts individuals uh, into his whatever, as much as he wants to gift this person. And then people still get envious and jealous of this person, even though this person didn't do a thing. It's all 100% grace. As well as peace is loose inside of your vessel, as well as mercy is loose inside of your vessel because you're going to need it. Uh, and graces, prudent graces, be loose inside of your vessel uh, because the devil is definitely coming to come inside of your life. Um, thinking that he's going to pass because these graces weren't inside of your life during the time that he actually put these plans for you. But obviously he's going to fail now because of grace. And you did nothing. It was all 100% grace. But still, you need to be able to practice these things. Uh, these things are just assets to actually be able to help you out. They're just actually meant to... Um, what is it? Um, they're like... How would I word it? Uh, they're really um, well, they're assets, right? Without them, without graces, you're not actually going to be a good disciple of Christ. Regardless of what your pastor says on your own individual efforts and, and this and that. Uh, but still, they even end up twisting this and they end up making it about hyper grace and that. All of it is grace, and you just have to kick your feet up. And I know I say that a lot, but realistically, that's the attitude that individuals actually have. They're just like, ah, oh, whatever. I don't really have to do anything. I'm so glad I have friends. I so I'm so glad I get to eat Chick Fil A. I'm so glad I get to worship. I'm so glad I have a TikTok account or whatever it may be that these individuals is have attributed to the Christian life and the Christian lifestyle. Oh, forget about it. The Christian life and the Christian lifestyle is you actually being persecuted. Uh, there's only two gospel. I mean, there's only one gospel, uh, and there's only two sides. Rather, there's either the God is going to protect your finances gospel, or you're going to have to suffer persecution. The people are going to try to kill you for no reason. And there's no in between, regardless of where you live. And that's essentially what it is. Anything that these individuals have to say when it involves finances, prosperity, gospel, 100%. God is not here to bless you financially ever. Don't listen to these individuals who want to say these types of things. It's not going to happen. Christ 100% is going to give you the strength to actually be able to work two jobs. But that's as far as it goes, honestly. Um, <laughs> that this pandemic actually came, the individuals were get. We're able to get unemployment is another story. Uh, but still, that money is going to run out eventually. And you're going to have to work. You're going to have to buy a car. You're going to have to do this. And you're, you're on your own at that point. Uh, so, yeah. Um, in, at that point, you're obviously going to be on your knees begging God for the strength. Uh, and the mercy to be able to wake up at 6 in the morning to be able to work. So uh, think ahead. Think about these situations. Uh, and yeah. Uh, honestly, I'm saying this out of 
how would I word it? Um, I'm saying this because I genuinely want you to put these things to practice. I don't want you to just listen to these things and you're just like, oh, well, yeah, that's sounding good. And I think I got it like that. I remember what you said at the right circumstances and on the right time. Whenever these trials and these tests actually come, I'll remember and I'll pass these tests. It's not going to happen. Uh, I, I listen to my videos all the time and guess who ends up failing? I do. So if I end up failing and I'm the one saying these things, you're definitely going to end up failing. Listen to it once or twice. Uh, you don't got it like you think you got it. You may think you be, you may have a successful run. Pride comes before the fall. In all honesty, you're not going to pass these tests whatsoever. Christ is going to send these tests on purpose to ensure it humbles you down. Uh, that way, you know that you're not going to pass these tests, and you're never going to pass these tests without Him, and you're never going to pass these tests without grace. So I'm telling you this. Because I've been through that road, but obviously I need to apply, uh, apply these things the way I, I should apply them to. Uh, my wife gets mad at me for nothing, whatever. She doesn't pass these tests either. Uh, but yeah, please pray for her. If you don't feel like God is hearing your prayers, just cast it out. It's, it's a demon messing with your mind. Uh, and just obviously put these things in perspective as well. And those the graces to really be firm and to stand firm in that. that just imagine if you were the one actually sending all of these... Uh, difficult people to deal with on a daily basis on a regular basis you already have come to the knowledge and understanding that you're obviously sending these individuals to come inside of your life for your own benefit because you already know that you're going to be able to pass these tests but people overcomplicate these things they put this in a legalistic manner why would god send this person he knows how i am and it's just sad and all that to see how how individuals are just able to wake up from that that rage uh, and that fury that they had against God for sending this person inside of their life, even though it was all meant for their benefit. And they don't think that, or, or whatever the case may be, but they don't think, they don't think, and they don't think. Pray and go ahead. Uh, Lucy's virtuous blessings, just like how I mentioned earlier, how when you're desirous of whatever the, the actual spirits that are attributed to these jewelries, uh, their virtues in themselves. I know some of it can be counterfeited uh, by the devil himself, so you really need to be cautious about these things and to ensure that you are casting out these spirits regardless, uh, but still be focused and centered on the maturity side of things, like I was mentioning earlier. Uh, that you really need to focus on the heart. Uh, that this is for your benefit, uh, to perfect your character, and not at all meant to actually um, get individuals to praise you. Obviously, Christ does not want individuals praising you uh, and taking His glory. When in reality, you realistically didn't do anything. You just lose His graces instead of your. He wants all the glory to go back to Him. You realistically didn't do anything. All of these gifts and all of these virtues themselves came from God himself. And then you were just sitting here, you're just loving it, loving the attention that you're obviously getting. And like, oh yeah, I love it. People think I'm this and people think I'm that. The reality you just need to mention and say that without Christ, I'm absolutely nothing. Because essentially that's what you are. Nothing without Christ. They're all gifts and graces. Imagine if Christ took those graces you were just loving the attention for. I mean, how salty would you feel at that point? Think ahead. And give the glory back to God. I feel salty. I feel salty. Uh, but yeah, uh, thank you. Have a good day. 
uh, and whatever else. Um, uh, loose the spirits inside of your life that God wants and that you need for your life because it is for your life. Loose the good works inside of your life to be able to do them. <laughs> and loose these spirits and loose these um, situations and circumstances to refine you the most efficient uh, way possible. And loose these tests and these trials and these tribulations and these suffrages to be able to help you benefit your character development 100%. Because that's essentially what you're here for. You're here to develop your character uh, for the rest of eternity. And that way you actually benefit from these things. That way you're appreciative. You're grateful for when somebody actually treats you nicely. You recognize that you're not entitled to be respected by anyone. That you're not dealing with any of the unnecessary suffrages that are going to come for your lack or your lack of a maturity towards these situations and because you're not really realistically coping with these situations in the manner that God wants you to in, in the manner that is, is well, not healthy, but it's just a sin. The way that you're actually coping with these situations, these scenarios, and these circumstances that are coming inside of your life. You're relying on your own coping mechanisms. Your own defense mechanisms are getting in the way of you and Christ's relationship. And intimacy. I don't mean relationship like you need to be dependent on this relationship for salvation. You still need to be dependent on holiness and, and discipline. Your faith with works is what I'm implying. When I say relationship as well. As well as checking your tones and attitudes and just cleansing yourself from the sins that you don't actually think are sins and delivering yourselves from the sins that you don't think are sins. Starting from your heart outward to your mind, to your will, to your emotions or to your emotions, to your will and your soul. Because all these issues themselves automatically start at the heart in case you didn't know. Great. Um, I think that about wraps it up. I mean, I'm sorry. I don't have more to talk about, but um, but yeah, I mean, I don't really have much else to say. I mean, I could talk more about these actual things, about the character developments and these trials. Um, but more, uh, you just have to read between the lines of the things that I actually have said in the video. Um, I know these are an hour long, and you're probably thinking that you actually have to pray. And afterwards, after you hear this video, but you can pray while you actually are uh, listening to this video. Well, I mean, they're automatically going to bring these things up, and that way you're, actually, you're going to be praying about the things that are being brought up uh, to your attention instead of you're just actually listening. You're like, wow, that sounds good, but you're not really praying about the things that you actually have heard um, to be imitators of and to actually put these things to practice, to not fail for these tests, uh, to not fail and, and to not actually fail these tests. to really hearken to be uh, warriors in a garden and to be prepared for whatever comes your way because everything and anything is coming your way that you ended up passing some of these tests with, without knowing this is a miracle in itself 
And I bet that if you've actually known all the things that were headed for your way, that actually have come your way, you probably wouldn't even have ended up passing these tests that came inside of your life. So, it's, I mean, ignorance is bliss in this case, for sure. Um, but still, Christ does not want you ignorant whatsoever at any time. Would you want your children to be ignorant when you already know? You would obviously want your kids to ask you 100%. But still, people think that Christ is just going to tell them. When he wants them to actually have an active role with him because he actively wants you seeking him. I mean, this should just be easy to be able to tell right away what he actually wants. He wants you to be attached to him by the hip. And he wants you to be always thinking about him. Uh, and always not fantasizing about him, but obviously being in love with him because he's your father and he died for your sins. Um, so you really need to have that attitude when you think about these things, when you think about actually having an active role with Christ, uh, because it's not just because he doesn't want you being lazy, but it's obviously because he genuinely wants you to uh, to be obsessed with him because he loves you. I mean, this is sad also in itself, uh, just because many individuals just don't really see it like that. Um, they think that, that just because God is love and God loves everyone, that that He doesn't love this indiv He doesn't love you in an individual way, where it's just you and Him. I know parents can relate to that. They can understand where Christ is coming from when He actually wants to develop this friendship and this relationship with you where you actually are seeking him daily and you actually have this active role because this is just what you love uh you just love your kids you just love your kids each in their own manner and each in their own way uh but you know, obviously don't love any of your children more than the other ones uh so, but definitely you definitely love your kids uh and that's for sure um and that's just essentially what Christ obviously is. And that's what Christ wants. I can't even make you believe this, but this is still 100% truth. But still, individuals have negative outlooks and just attitudes towards Christianity uh, and through... And I mean, to just biblical truths and to things that they really shouldn't have this type of attitude towards because they're so carnal minded and they fail to equate that God and Christ himself is obviously perfect that um, when they're not like the image that we obviously are used to and accustomed to seeing whenever we are doing whatever we need to do with these trials and these tribulations that are being puppeteered inside of our life. I know I'm stuttering a lot, but it's whatever. Uh, thank you for listening. Um, have a good one. Um, Uh, thank you. I pray that the graces are loose inside of your vessel to be able to do these works and to just actually be delivered from your anything negative inside of your mind, anything negative inside of your heart, anything negative inside of your it's just emotions. That's one of the main things that Christ, what well, Christ, well, yeah, Christ sends inside of your life to obviously target for you to be able to purge some of your emotions. Uh, and to get rid of these things. He sends the devil to your life to puppeteer your life. The devil knows these things. But he tries to get inside of your head to make it seem like he's acting on his own will. When in reality, he's just not whatsoever. He answers to God 100%. Uh, Christ is using him as a sword. Uh, and obviously, just like I mentioned earlier. Um... Obviously, just like how I mentioned earlier. If you were the one puppeteering the devil... Uh, and 
you were sending these tests and these trials uh, to just make you feel these emotions that we you actually are able to purge this anger you're able to purge these fears and you're able to get rid of these um the, these sadnesses these depression modes and or hopeless feelings whatever the emotion may be that is negative obviously you'll be like oh it's just for my benefit and realistically you would just shrug these tests off and you would just I have a good attitude about these tests and, and you'll probably end up passing all of these tests but uh, because obviously Bob gets on your nerves and Steve is is getting you mad these tests don't obviously end up you don't pass these tests with flying colors so And that's essentially the reason why these tests are coming inside of your life. And to be able to purge your emotions because you're so cursed and the devil obviously knows these things as well. But Christ knows these things to be able to help you uh, let go of your emotions and let go of you being so dependent. To actually make you spiritually sharp uh, and that your emotions be purged out so you're not really relying on your emotions whatsoever but you're relying on uh the spiritual side of things and what christ himself has commanded you to do and what christ obviously wants from you to, to obviously do he wants you i forgot how it was worded he wants you to start relying on the emotional side of things to just to make you spiritually that you're spiritually it's your spiritual sensibility is sharpened. And that's what essentially you need to pray. That your spiritual sensibility be sharpened. As well as just not being so hostile. I don't know how many times I've commented on another individual's this page. And they thought I was being hostile 100%. And they just started attacking me. They started getting flared up and angry with me. When in reality, I wasn't even saying these things to to um, to assert my, my correctness. To assert how right I am. I was obviously trying to correct this person. But nobody ever wants to be corrected. And their whole attitude towards... Uh, and approach towards these situations and these comments is I'm right, you're wrong. Uh, I can't be wrong ever. Mm, uh, God forbid that you're right. And uh, I know God would never lead me astray when in reality I've been led astray by God plenty of times. I've been sent off by God plenty of times. Um, it's not nice. Uh, and yet here I am still being faithful to God and not really wavering or thinking that I should go to the devil's side. I mean, that's just stupid. Uh, 
it was obviously going to be as strict as, as, as the word says, as strict as, as strict as the Bible says, excuse me, and um, nothing was going to change. Uh, thank you. Uh, have a good day. Uh, be blessed. Uh, do better. <laughs> be better people. Always strive to be better than you were yesterday, than you were today, than you were five minutes ago, than you were ten minutes ago. And, um, yeah, I'm sorry, but yeah, that's about it. Uh, thank you. Lucy's grace is ahead of time. That way you mature instead of age. Because all of these aging, um, visibly aging signs that you we obviously see are works of iniquity that they're being paid for. So obviously you're doing something praiseworthy to God. You're losing these virtues that are going to help you mature that you don't obviously age. You're not going to be age grace. You're not going to be able to age gracefully without any of these uh, virtues and graces. Excuse me. Which is just being obedient and fearing the Lord a hundred percent, on top of all the other uh, principles that Christ Himself has already demanded from you that He obviously wants from you a hundred percent. Because He knows you're twenty eight years old. He knows you're twenty nine years old. He wants you to act your age a hundred percent. If you don't know how to act 28 years old, or you don't know how to act 23 years old, you should definitely ask Christ for help, and he'll definitely lose some angels your way to be able to serve him, to be able to help you, and to be able to serve you. But because you know this information 100%, you need to really put your, um, you really need to actually put this to practice, and Daddy's not going to be holding your hand all your life, and you really need to actually be. He's going to help you, right? Training wheels. But, I mean, he's going to be helping you always, but realistically, you really need to um, to live by that principle that dad is not going to be helping you at all times whatsoever. So you're going to have to really man up and really grow up out of that uh, way of thinking that it's all grace. God has me in the palm of his hands and he has my names written on his palms. These things are true, but obviously you're getting older, right? And just based off that alone, you could already equate that God himself wants you to obviously have an active role and to not be so lazy and to not be so um, dependent on him. And when obviously you are more than capable you know these things you're more than knowledgeable about what he actually wants from you and what he actually requires from you because you're so accustomed to drinking spiritual milk you're just like whatever um keep bottle feeding me uh, this is fine i'm nice and comfortable i'm accommodated uh I, I, and i like my life how it is but christ is going to shake you violently and what is going to happen honestly what you know yourself better than you what is going to happen you're going to fail these tests miserably and some of you are in the some of you are going to end up departing from the faith just because of these tests when you should have just hearkened and you, realistically you should have just matured uh and really become I mean, really act your age and really be independent about these types of things I mean, obviously what I'm implying as well is that you're never going to be able to do anything without Christ, but still, you're learning, uh, and you're growing in spiritual maturity and in Christ. But to practice right now, just so you actually are getting a feel of of what Christ actually wants from you, as well as you actually gaining a little bit of experience and momentum uh, to be able to make more practice of it, uh, and to ensure that you actually uh, keep this habit. 
as well as delivering yourselves from any curses that would make it difficult for you for you to actually be able to um to just be efficient and to just be flowing through this like water so yeah i'm breaking any curses just in case there are any well 100 percent, there are some uh, that are stopping you from actually being a disciple of Christ and just obviously stopping you from doing the works that Christ himself already knows that you need to be doing and already knows that you know that you should be doing these works. As well as you not being able to equate these things that Christ himself actually wants you to do. Instead of waiting for him to tell you what's wrong and what you need to do, you obviously already know what you need to be doing, right? I pray that those graces are loose inside of your vessel. Because you're not going to be able to do it without it, without grace, right? How did you get saved? By grace through faith. These are just basic biblical principles. Every deliverance, every healing, every gift, every healthy thing that is on your body, your, your immune system. All of it, the grace of God. When these things begin to fail, is obviously they're cursed. Sin and turned inside of your life because you obviously fell into temptation. And so these terminal illnesses came, these ailments came, infirmities that you have authority to obviously cast out, they came inside of your life. You don't put these things to practice. You've never broken a curse. You don't, you don't even know how to... You've never even heard about this. But nevertheless, these principles are still rule. And that said, in all honesty, when you're sitting here all stalled out waiting for Christ to actually deliver you from these things because you're waiting on His timing when in reality it doesn't even work like that whatsoever. You realistically really need to Put the pep to your step and really take an active role uh, with Christ and actually seeking Christ and, and not being so uh, limiting of the Holy Spirit and to stop being so legalistic toward the things that just require common sense. What is more powerful, the Holy Spirit or your infirmity? I don't know. Mm. The Holy Spirit, right? Uh, but I pray any of these curses that are going to make it difficult for you to be able to cast these devils out and be broken. And then as well as you just break these curses through the cross because Christ himself became a curse for us. It's all done by faith. You could send these curses. I mean, visibly, you could imagine. I mean, oh you know, yeah, you could imagine these things as sending them just directly to the cross. Whatever these curses are, and obviously these things in themselves break the curses a hundred percent. And then obviously, when you break the curse, you're actually able to cast these devils out. And that's it. You you cast this devil out like you've been casting devils out all day. You cast the devil out that's hindering you and stopping you from actually seeing the results that you wanted to see. Thank you. It would mean a lot to me if you actually put this to practice instead of just saying, wow, yeah, this sounds good. I really don't like that type of approach whatsoever. If I don't like it, Jesus Christ definitely doesn't like it. If I don't like it, the Holy Spirit doesn't like it, right? Thank you, people. Have a good day. Love your enemies. Love you.
Don't be afraid of the devil. Amen. Fight.